more World Cup action over here with Nador versus Trosco. And I think Nador is playing for Team Canada and Trosco for Team Spain. And yeah, this is Sun and Moon OU. Nador bringing some balance. Mega Venus on both sides, which is interesting. You don't see Mega Venus that often, and now you see them both sides. We had that happen in SPL, uh, in Smog 2 too, where it was um, Porsche was PTC, also both brought uh, Mega Venus their team. But yeah, at least this time it's not almost a mirror match. In that game, it was almost a mirror match. They had like only two months different, I think. But yeah, they have. I mean, he has a Skarm instead of Celesteela, so. And two months are simple, uh, are the same, which is uh, Vino and Chomp. But yeah, let me try to analyze them teams. Uh, this is Nador's first team, I think. Uh, first game for this World Cup. And also think Trolls goes first game. So yeah, he obviously has Wish Pass from Adam Mola. I could see him being um, Spike Skarmory with Hazard stack, Trosco's team. Because he doesn't have Hazard control on his own if it's not Defox Skarm. And like Defox Skarm is not really the best Defox I feel. So I could see him being like Skarm and then either rocks, either rocks on Scarf Chomp or on, uh, on Heatran. But I'm thinking there's a Scarf Chomp. Uh, probably Z move Tapu Lele. I could be wrong here, but that's um, what I think about his team. Opposing turn is kind of annoying to Trosco's team with the correct set. So I don't know, he might have Earthquake on his Venusaur. Or he might be Z Focus Blast on Lele. Either or, here. Yeah. And Nador's team. Rocks Clef or Chomp, but I'm I'm thinking Z move Chomp and Rocks Clef. Scarf Laddy or Scarf Grin. And uh Spadef Celestila. Maybe a bit mixed defensive, but I assume Spadef. And more Fistev oriented Venusaur. Uh, at least Fistev Clef on this team. Because uh, he doesn't have any, he doesn't have a Tangros or something else to switch into Bandit Thousand Arrows, so he has to be Max Defense Clef or Max Defense Venusaur, either or. But I think Clef is a bit more reliable to switch into Thousand Arrows because it has Soft Ball, which has 16 PP. Synthesis only has 8 PP, and Synthesis only also heals less in weather, in specific weather like rain or sand. Okay, he leads up with Tapu Lily versus the Guard Chomp. I assume you're just gonna see him switch into Celesteela turn one. I don't think Garchum can Oko tap Lele unless it has a Z move. Oh, actually, Ofku does 96. Oh, it's Life Hop Jump. Yeah, he's gonna switch out to Telosila as expected. And that's 15%, so we're gonna see now. We can calc if it's Max Spadev. Yeah, that's Scar like that Scarf Lele damage, but I assume it's, like I said, Z, Z move Lele. Like the damage just tells us he doesn't have, probably doesn't have a boosting item. So yeah, this, I think this makes with F starting to 16%. Yep. So he's either gonna go Venus operating a lead seed or I can also see him going into Alamomola. And the door is probably gonna double out. If I'm not door, I double into something that covers the heat. The, if he has something that covers the heat in the Alamomola and the Venus, I would double into that. Um, but it's kind of tough. He goes Alamola. Did he double into Clef? Okay. I, I was thinking double into Clef maybe. To get up the rocks. He just goes for Lichid, which is fine. Like, he's, he's Max Spadev. It's not like Venusaur came in there. Venusaur can't really do that much to him. And Venusaur would get stalled out of Synthesis eventually. But yeah, he's gonna pivot out with the Alamola. Gets in the trend on the... Fable, which is nice for Trolls Go. Most T Trends don't carry a flash can these days, so Nador might stay in. The main thing he needs this Clefable healthy for is maybe a Z move Guard Chomp. But um, like I said, I think it's Scarf Guard Chomp. 
I, I don't want to um, like give so many options and not like like the main thing that I think he is is uh, scarf jump and Z move Lele. That is what I that is what I said and I stand by that. Because he just he's just so weak to walk around otherwise. But it's a sub toxic trend probably that is going around like that you see that set so often at the moment. But they don't really run carry flash can. But yeah, he can click Magma Storm here. It's not like the door has a good switch into that. I mean he has Greninja and he has Ladi. But behind the substitute, like that's Hitman is a pain to deal with for the door. But yeah, getting up rocks is nice. The rocks are here to stay unless he's defox Skarmory. He goes hard into Greninja and Magma Storm should do like 35% exactly. Whew. They call me the cat count master sometimes. Mm -mm. I assume he's gonna go for Hydro Pump here. And the Heatran can just go for Earth Power here. Would Earth Power kill the Greninja with the with the lava magma storm secondary effect? Uh, Earth Power is 50 to 60 if he's max special attack. But he, I don't think he's max special attack, he gets a crit. So he went for Dark Pulse, he was uh, Specs Ash Grin, I assume. So that makes me think that he's Scarf Lari, now that we know that the Grin wasn't the Scarfer. So he goes out in the Guard Shroom, I assume this is SDZ move. If he's a uh, SD fire Z move, he can SD up here and destroy the Skarmory. Um, yeah, Trosco is either going to go Alamola or Skarmory here. Yeah, he goes on the Skarmory. Does he FD? Nice play. And Trosco might scout for Z fire thing here. This could also be fire. F this could also be the skull breaking guard jump that we saw in SPL, which is a gold set. It's a uh, SD earthquake fire blast dragon claw, and it's Z tectonic rage. Which is um, to break through Anubar Clive on stall, and in this game it would help to break through Almomola. But yeah, he just just just, just go for fire. Thing. Does he get a flinch? No flinch. Scumry gets over poison. That's a fist of leftover Scumry. So a toxic roost. Spikes and whirlwind maybe. No attacking move. Maybe brave bird. Not sure. Like <coughs> Steam's kind of weak to Heracross, but Heracross is not really common. But I could still see this having Brave Bird because you don't want to be super weak to Heracross, right? Like Heatran beats it, but Heatran can't switch in. Actually, some Heatrans. No, I think this Heatran should be near. Should run enough speed for Hera. I don't remember. Um. Yeah, Hera's one element, so like if the turn is modest. I know they're running like. They're running like. Yeah, the, Hero, the Heracross should be slower than the Heatran, but that. That cannot be your only check. Lele and Tren. Lele and Tren are the only ones that beat Hera. I guess he doesn't expect Nador to bring it if he doesn't have Brave Bird. But yeah, they're still thinking here. I can see Trosco staying in, expecting Nador to predict to switch into Alamomola here. The, the switch into Alamomola is kind of obvious. So I can see the door going for Earthquake or... <laughs> if he has Tectonic Rage, he might click it here, predicting the Alamomola. That's why I could see Trosk... Like, if I'm Trosk, I might consider staying in predicting the ground move here. <laughs> But uh, this matchup was a bit hyped up, let's see. I like this game so far, like it's not gonna be like one of those 50 minute games that we had earlier. It's probably gonna be like 25 game, 30 minute game. Okay, so it's Trosco still thinking, and the dog clicked this um, move like a while ago. I mean, I would be thinking too. <laughs> Do you need Skarmory for anything? Like Skarmory, Skarmory doesn't do that much work. But if he has, if it has Defog, that's obviously nice to get that off later. He just stays in. The door plays itself. Yeah, I probably would have stayed in two there, because if you go Alamomola there, you get like predicted, and he goes for like 
the devastating drag or the earthquake or something like that. It's not worth it. And he brings out a top of Lily, which makes, which um, screams that he's Joyce Scarf. Because um, why would you bring out top of Lily if you're not Joyce Scarf? Because you died a plus two earthquake. So I guess my analysis was wrong, and this might not be Scarf uh, Z move Lily. This might be Scarf Lily, and then Z move Guard Trump. But I just don't see how he beats Volcarona. So he doubles up breaking the Cellar Stealer. So that this makes me think that he's um he's SD on this with um some Z move to break Cellar Stealer. Uh, Inferno Overdrive, the Z Firefang maybe. I mean we saw Firefang on the opposing chomp too, but he didn't go for it. Maybe he saw Firefang, but he didn't go for the Z move. Maybe he has SD Fire Thing and then Z Move Outrage. Like maybe he's not Z F Z Outrage. Maybe Z Outrage instead of Z Fire Thing. So he goes out hard into Ladi, predicting either a Sword Stance or Fire Thing, and he just sets up the rocks. And the door is um, probably gonna go out into Alamomola here. If he predicts a Draco or a Trick, he can obviously go hard into Tabu Lily. I mean, I like Alamomola, the Alamomola play here in case this laddie has Surf, but he just goes into uh, Tapu Lele, goes for a trick, oh my lord, now he looks like a god, but I mean, I told you guys, if he predicts um, Trick or Draco, he's gonna go into Tapu Lele. I mean, that play is understandable, but if this laddie was like Spec Psyshock or Spec Surf, I, I expected like... Either a trick or a Draco. I probably would have doubled if I was in the door. I mean, he obviously expected either the Alma Mola or the Heatran. I think he predicted the Heatran, like one of these two. So like, I can stand, I can understand the door's play. Um, Cause it's like, it's not, it's not like he really had a double switch that covered all these three Pokemon. Like, it was, it was a hard scenario. So like, yeah, I think that's Choice Garf. It only did uh, 45 to Clefable, the most clever run, like Fist Dev, like I said. Let's say a uh, top of Lily, just Scarf, Moonblast does 42 to 51, yeah, I assume it's Scarf. Wait, that is really weird, um, I don't see his Volcarona counter. I mean, Garchomp takes a hit from Volcarona, but Z Inferno Overdrive at plus one does like a lot to Garchomp. And also, he, like Heatran, most Volcarona carry HP grown, so it's not like Heatran is the best answer. So he either has some tech somewhere on his team or some specific resist berry that helps him versus Volcarona. Okay, it's knockoff clef to help versus Feather Balance or Stall teams to get rid of the lefties and stuff. But yeah, Mega Venusaur comes out. I think it's gonna go into uh, Celestila or Larios here. But yeah, this is good. This is looking kind of good for Trosgo, I think. So he goes out into Venusaur. Okay, I didn't expect that. This gives Trosco a free switch into Heatran as long as this doesn't have Earthquake or Knockoff. You already showed Knockoff on Clefable, so I don't think he will have Knockoff on Venusaur too. Someone asked if that is the Death Clef. Nah, it's not. I, um, I don't think so. Yeah, it could be mixed up with some Spadef, but I mean, if it was Scarf, Tapu, Lily, that makes completely. Like Scarf type of Lily just does 52 to 51 to fist death class, so like. So we see Trosco's Venusaur does a little bit more damage. He either got a higher roll there or his Nador's Venusaur might run a little bit more speed. But nah, nah, Trosco's Venusaur outspeed him. Oh, we do see it's a speed tie. We do see it's a speed tie, yeah. Because one time this was fast, and another turn this was fast. He goes to uh, sell Stealer on the Sludge Bomb. So basically, Nador just got off his Mega. So that his Venusaur has a bit more bulk. Can switch in easier into like Earthquake from Garchomp. But he also has this Clef to switch into that kinda. And the Ladi to switch in if he breathes Earthquake. But yeah, he gets the Mega off basically 
if he has to like take a hit and he predicted him to pivot into something and he went for sludge bomb again did he predict him to go back into venus operating leech seed he predicted him to go into clef or venus operating leech seed or, or maybe he predicted him to pivot into ladi not really sure but yeah this is fine like the combination of heatran plus alamomola can with wish path is just really annoying for an door and for the Celestealer. And this knockoff is coming in clutch. I'm not sure if I would have let this get knocked off. I would have actually liked this. Knockoff Alumola, I've used that too. I mean, it's pretty. It was on this Yelt stall earlier in the game that I recorded too, but I like it on balance too. Well, like, Tapu Fiend is not that common, but when there was like one point in uh, Sun and Moon where Tapu Fiend was really common. And I used this um, knockoff set specifically back then to get rid of Tabu Fini's leftovers because they would always taunt your Alamomola so you can toxic like after Misty Terrain runs out and so you can't wish stuff like that. But yeah, now he goes in the clef. I mean, the Doors mods they have synth like Vino has synthesis, this has Lead Sheet to heal at least, and this has softball, but still losing leftovers on these two mods can be really annoying. Um, I, I would think that Trosco has a slight advantage at the moment, but this, it's gonna be a close game. So he's gonna go for. Um, he gets the wish path. He's gonna go into his own Venusaur or Ladi or Stella Stila. So many options. The thing is, if he goes Ladi, he doesn't really do much. Like. Trosco just has good checks for Ladio. So he stays in and I assume he goes for Softball. Wow. He goes for Knockoff. He goes for knockoff predicting Trosco to double into thumb. Maybe predicting Trosco to double into Heatran. Because Heatran would have covered the Celestila and the uh, Venusaur and the Ladios. Yeah, I think he predicted him to double into Heatran. And he sacks off his Clefable. Trosco playing it safe and it pays off. So Nador really playing aggressive here. Expecting um, Trosco to. <laughs> I don't know, expecting Trost to go for HP Fire, trying to catch the Celestila or something else, but basically he didn't expect him to go for Sludge Bomb. Now Trost goes up 5, 4, and his team, like, he was already in the slight advantage, like, I, in, like in my opinion. But yeah, I'm really, like, interested about what the thought behind this team is if you see a vault like oh my god i think he just went for synthesis that's a safe play from trosco's part because this is um scarf Lottie that has like side shock doesn't do that much so synthesis was a fine play to scout what the Lari locks himself into like i completely agree with synthesis being there because if the um Lari goes for trick you can the Lari is forced out in the next turn and he goes on the guard room and i still think this is sdz move Um, I think last time you went hard into Lari on the Stealth Rock. So if you predict the Lari here, you go for Dragon Claw, but or Outrage. But I think he's gonna SD up. Yeah, this is tough. I don't see on a door can come back, but I've said that multiple times and people have come back. But I just see everything going. Trolls goes away as he pivots into Venus on the lead sheet. Nice play. Um, yeah, like I said, the Celestia not having leftovers. This is huge in this match. In, in this specific matchup, one on one is super huge. Because Heavy Slam doesn't do that much to Venus, so. Last move is either Earthquake or HP Fire. Because you already had knockoff on LO. I mean, he could also have lead seed, but uh, uh, yeah, lead seed is another option. But I don't think he has that. So he does just go for sludge bomb. Man, he keeps predicting my return. Like it works out in most of the time in Trosco's favor at the moment. Both Q and B answer is X. I think Prashbrand brought one yesterday. <laughs> I love leaks at Alamomola. Yeah, Alamomola is an okay answer, I guess. If you can scald burn Kirum, um, Fusion Ball is gonna bounce off. Yeah, Alamomola is not the best answer, but it's okay. And he finally reveals the Z move after the door. 
um, what went for synthesis and Azimov said absolutely nothing because he didn't SD up Venus was showing why it's fat I assume this is a bold near max defense Venus or maybe like the standard spread that runs like 24 speed something like that I don't remember the he's just gonna synthesis up I don't remember the exact amount of speed that Venus runs why am I lagging yeah, he gets in the heat train and he can substitute here the last move is gonna be Giga Dreno HP fire he did show each seed <laughs> like always Drake does nothing Yo, I think Lefty also used left um, Leech Seed Mega Venus in this game yesterday it's interesting I haven't used that set myself. I also haven't used Venus in a while. Sasha can't even break the sub. This game is over. I mean, he misses a Magma Storm, which is annoying. But he can just substitute again here. This is gonna break the sub, so he can sub up again. Uh, yeah, I, I would have subbed again there. But this is actually this is actually a really good play because he he traps the Ladi in, and he can substitute here. Sasha only does 18 percent, and the Ladi now is trapped to, thanks to Magma Storm. And the next Magma Storm kills this laddie and the Heatron is still behind the sub and... I mean he goes for Toxic, okay. Toxic plus Magma Storm gonna bring this down to 7, he's gonna sub again here. Cause the Sashuk is gonna break the sub. Yeah, th this game is over. I mean he said that Heatron is a problem, I mean... This this game is over, like... <laughs> Ladi dies to poison here. Like what is he gonna do? He can go to uh, he guard him and break the sub, but like he's gonna have to take a magma storm and the poison damage. Or Earth Power is a safe play because it can't miss. And I don't know if magma Earth Power does more than magma storm. Probably does a little bit more because of magma storm being resistant, resisted. But I think it does around the same amount. Maybe Earth Power does a little bit more, yeah. But yeah, Subjun putting in a lot of work this game. This is. Uh, this game is over. He goes for the Z move finally, which is devastating Drake. And Almumola still eats it up. I, I love how it did 57 to Almumola. And on the other side, I think it did 56 to the Venusaur. Like 50 something to both. Yeah, it did 56 to Venusaur, 57 to Al. So these bulky mons showing that they don't care about Z moves. I think he's just gonna go for Wish here. The door might go for SD predicting a uh, protect. Because I think the only way he can kill this Almamola from this range is with Outrage. I don't think Earthquake would kill. And if he goes for Outrage, he can obviously revenge this with the top of Lily. So I, I would go for Wish here. He just, just played safe. It's understandable, but he doesn't have to make really have to make any plays. But I probably would have gone into top of Lily there. Uh, I probably would have gone for Protect. Uh, for wish what what the fuck dude you guys can hear you guys can i just went all over the place i did, i would have not have gone into top lately i would have either gone for wish or protect but i was leaning more to the wish play because yeah i, I was talking about top lately because if he kills you with outrage you can he's trapped and then you can revenge him with top lately that's why i said that. yeah i just mixed up the sentence there so okay he goes for protect again because when he switches and the protect fails you can go for it again without it failing obviously and you get more leftovers and I assume he's gonna go out into his own Venusaur, yep it's a crit which is a bit annoying as because if he goes for synthesis here they both have five synthesis left the turn earlier when the door went for a for stealth rocks on the Heatran, it's understandable that he needs to have that up, but Heatran getting a free substitute early game was huge. And they had a crit on the Greninja, I gotta recalc if that mattered. It was Ash Greninja versus... I mean it was not an Ash for me, it was a Heatran. Yeah, if he runs the standard set which is more 32 special attack on Subtrain. Like that's the set I see a lot that Bengay said. I would have done um, 47 
to 55, so it would have been a roll, so the crit might not even have mattered. I mean, it was unlikely because he probably wouldn't have gotten the roll. So, yeah, the door basically switched out what happened here. He switched out. He sludge bombed the opposing Venusaur, then he switched out into Celestia on the synthesis. And he switched uh, to the Trosco, switched to Almomola and on Leech Seed. And he throws up a wish. And yet his wish is putting in work. Like if the door had spikes up, maybe maybe that would have helped this matchup. I mean he doesn't have a spike set, I'm just saying in general. I mean he could be spikes on Ashgrim, but on his Greninja, he lost his Greninja pretty early. Because he had a set, like I said, that Trin got a free sub earlier because he went for rocks on that turn with the clef. Then it had to switch in to Magma Storm, and the combination of Magma Storm plus Earth Forge just killed it. Even though it was a crit, the Hyrule would have killed anyway, like I said, if it's that specific modest trend spread that we have here in the Kalk. And yeah, Trosco is gonna go to his. Um, either either Heatran or into his Venusaur. Um, if this doesn't have. If this only has Giga Drain, this is a free. Yeah, Trosco can go to Heatran here for free if this only has Giga Drain. But he's still thinking, he's probably looking at the opponent's team. If it makes sense for this Venusaur to have something to beat the Heatran, like Earthquake. Um, I don't think he has it, I think he's just Giga Drain. Like his main way of dealing with Heatran is just those two months, Chomper and the Gren. He goes into the Guard Room, that's an interesting play. I think I would have just gone into Heatran, what, what did he lose from going Heatran? Guy jump doesn't really beat Venusaur, especially with Leech Seed on it. Maybe he just wants to pivot back into his own Venusaur, but I think that was the freest heat turn ever. He would have gone Leech Seeded, but that's fine, like... I don't know, I think I would have gone Heat Turn, but he will have a reason why he made that play. Um, he's in such a good position, like... I don't think it's like game changing or anything, but if he went Heat Turn there with the Wish Up... He could have still pivoted out afterwards after getting leech seated. I mean, it was the same with Garchomp. So Nador predicts the Alamomola doubles out his uh, Salasila into Venusaur, so if he can threaten this with Giga Drain, but I don't think Giga Drain even does that much. Like I assume it does like 60 maybe. Trosco is. I can see Trosco going for Protect or Wish, or I can see him going into Heatran, yeah, okay, he goes for Wish, and this time he's gonna pass into Heatran, I assume. So he basically wanted to get his entire team healthy, first he wished up his um, Chomper, now he's gonna wish up the Tran. And he can, if he doubles into Garchomp here, but well, he just Leech Seeds again, yeah. Double into Garchomp doesn't help him because he was poisoned. And Ador Trosco would've just gone back into Alomola, so yeah, Trosco's gonna pick up the win for Team Spain, like... I don't see how Nador can bring this back. Like I got a death match that was kind of tough, but hmm. yeah, I really don't know what he could have done about this. He brings in the Chomper, which is like the only thing that can even break the sub from the Heatran, I think, at this point, unless he says he has Earthquake, which I don't think it has. As it's. Uh, Vino on Vino action, which is always bad for Nador, because if he keeps going for Sludge Bomb and Trosco gets in his heat turn on a Sludge Bomb, it's gonna be bad. So I assume Trosco wants to bring Nador into a range race uh, for us to synthesis, so he can bring in his heat turn. As Nador tried to predict the heat turn there, went for lead sheet. So I think he's either gonna lead sheet again, predicting the heat turn here, Nador, or he's gonna synthesis. And I think Trosco is gonna go Heatran. Yep. Oh, he goes Garchomp. Wow. Why? Doesn't Heatran just win if you bring it in there? Because this cannot. We don't know the last move yet, but I assume it cannot break Heatran's sub, and then Heatran just gets the sub up and wins the game. But I guess FD Garchomp, he wants it to put in some work. He doesn't have Fire Fang. He's um, Stealth Rock, Outrage, SD, Earthquake. Yeah. So this is gonna do like. Oh, 50. Oh, is this Adamant Guard Shop? He did 50%, wow. So he's gonna protect the get more health back, and then we'll see if the Guard Shop is gonna be locked into Outrage and hit itself. Uh, let's say Guard Shop, oh, you Swords Dance. 
I'll switch into the protect. Uh, let's say plus two. So he's not confused. He got a three turn, so this is just gonna die. Yeah, if he would have gotten confused there, I think he would have just stayed in the sectors anyway. Like if he hit himself, I don't think he cared at this point. So in the door, this win a speed tie there, or potential speed tie. This might have been element, like I said, that's what I wanted to figure out at the moment. Um, not life orb. Uh, plus two outrage. Versus a uh, Celestia, that is 47 to 56 from Jolly Garchomp. So yeah, I think he was Jolly and there was a roll. And it was a GG and forfeited. Did I miss anything? Yeah, like the door went down, his guard jump went down to the rough skin. And then he only had his Venusaur left. And yeah, the Scarf Tapu Lily would have came in here, and even if it's not Scarf. I mean, it was Scarf, I think it was revealed earlier with the trick play. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It basically outspeeds Venusaur no matter what Lily it is, but we know it's Scarf Lily. So it would have killed the Venusaur with its uh, Psychic Stab. And yeah, Heatran also should have won the game. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Yeah, I think Troth got match up, but he also played well for most of it. And he picks up the win for Team Spain over... Um, I think Netherlands Canada has had it multiple times. But I'm only 90% sure, not 100% sure, but it should be Canada. And the gem, it's a great game by Trosco. Yeah, I like watching this one. And yeah, I'll see you more with more, I'll see you with more World Cup coverage later. I know that Snowy from Oceania is going to be playing in like 7 hours from now, 6 hours. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and goodbye.